This is Jerry Hesch of the Hesch Institute in Aurora, Colorado. And my client came to see me from San Francisco. And um, she's had a long history of having sacroiliac pain. Um, she's aware that her body feels twisted. And this was in response to a fall and several motor vehicle accidents. And how long have you had these symptoms? Seven years. Seven years. And she has seen four orthopedists. She does have a thoracic scoliosis, but the lumbar spine is quite straight um, per the x-rays. Um, she's seen two massage therapists, four chiropractors, six physical therapists, a bone setter, and anybody else? That's it. <laughs> Sorry? That's all. That's all. Okay, alrighty. So when she walks and when she stands, the, the right leg is slightly externally rotated more so than the other. So uh, arbitrarily the right foot points out 15 degrees and then the left one does about 20 degrees. Um, but when we test passive motion, the motion is equal on both sides. Um, with the focused SI screen, the hip motion was normal in all directions and uh, no discomfort provoked. When she is prone, uh, she has normal movement throughout the ilia, throughout the hemipelvis on both sides in all directions. So I can load and spring her upwards, medially, forwards, forwards at the top, inferiorly at the top, and she has good sacral mobility when she's prone, all right? Uh, when she's supine, she has good pelvic mobility of side glide and of posterior rotation. The one thing that we find is that her sacrotubus ligament on the left is softer. I can indent it about a quarter of an inch. It's softer than the sacrotubus ligament on the right that I can indent about an eighth of an inch. And the PSIS on the left is higher towards her ear and it's higher towards the ceiling. Okay? And what we find is that it has normal movement again in all positions except going obliquely. So I'm trying to spring this ilium at a 45 degree angle and it's, the joint is already compressed in that direction and I'm not able to compress it any further and I'm using a reasonable typical amount of force and now I'm trying to, to spring it obliquely inferiorly. I'm going at a 45 degree angle and there's no movement. Now if we come and capture the other ilium, okay, and I load it, it moves, takes up the slack, and then I can spring it inferiorly and it springs, it gets to an end point and bounces right back, okay? And when I capture that PSIS and ilium, I'm going obliquely upwards towards the left and I can take up the slack, it moves and then it comes to a stop point. And then I spring it and it springs forward and it bounces right back. Okay, so we have a loss of movement going obliquely up and obliquely down on the left hemipelvis. Now when she goes into flexion, um, for example, let me put three pillows under your stomach, okay? Can you get up on all fours? And I want these only under the stomach. I don't want them under the, let me put one more please. Good. Alrighty, go ahead and lay down. Okay. And when we get her in a position of passive flexion, then what happens is the lower part of the sacrum, the lower right quadrant, becomes prominent towards the ceiling. That's called a sacral torsion. And I cannot spring that lower quadrant of the sacrum. I come onto the left lower quadrant, I take up the slack, I see her whole body move. It moves to an end point, and then I thrust it, and it goes forward, and it bounces straight back, very strong. And the same thing is true on the upper two quadrants, but the lower right quadrant, no, I can't take up the slack, it is stuck, okay? When we look at the inferior 
part of the sacrum. She's lower on the left infralateral angle. I make sure I don't spring the midline coccyx, so I identify the tailbone, and I come to the side of it, and I cannot take up the slack pushing up towards her ear with a reasonable amount of force. There's just no movement. I double that force, there's no movement. On the right side, boom, I take up the slack. I take the structure to an end point. Then I spring it with, with uh, about the same amount of force added. And it springs and, and recoils back. So I submit that the sacrum behaves as though it's twisted on an oblique axis and side bent and side bent to the left. Okay? So what I'm going to do is have her lie on her back and I'm going to help her passively stretch her left knee towards the front of her right shoulder. I want an oblique downward force going through the hip joint and going to the pelvis okay and see if we can bring this downward and restore movement okay is this pattern happening inside the SI joint don't have a clue we don't have a way of looking inside the joint and and in you know surgically implanting titanium balls and looking at it with the standard of orthopedic joint research which is called stereophotogrammetry we can't do that in my little clinic here okay so nobody knows if this really is a true SI movement pattern where the ilia moved on the sacrum or the torsion where the sacrum rotated on the, on the sacrum nobody knows could it be a phenomenon an interesting phenomenon of the nervous system and muscles holding in this pattern could be nobody knows that either okay so all we have is theories but what we do know is we have a symptomatic client she has pain in the region of the SI and we find a place where most normal physiological motion is stuck. On that basis, I'm interested in treating her. My goal is to restore normal movement obliquely so that, the, so that I can spring this, this left ilium obliquely upward and obliquely downward. I want normal anterior rotation on when I'm on the lower quadrant of the, of the sacrum. I want normal side bending when I spring upwards. And I did find blocked motion when I tried to spring the, the spinous process of, of L5 on the left. Okay, and I think I just luckily got on it. Whereas on the on going, springing it to the left, it moves nicely. Okay, but when I try and spring that spinous process, there's there's distinct restriction. Now when I come up to the next one above, boom, we have motion. Okay, um, so I'm going to stop filming now again to treat this. She's going to hug her left knee, bent knee. She'll lie on her back. She'll stretch it towards her left shoulder, and I'll give her a very gentle overpressure, and we'll maintain that for two minutes. After that, I'm going to come back and I'm going to retest the spring mobility, and I'm going to retest the sacrum because maybe the sacrum will be behaving in response to that treatment. Otherwise, I'll treat the the sacrum for what we call a sacral torsion and there's a self-treatment on YouTube you can just type in my last name hesh h-e-s-c-h that's s like Sam h-e-s-c-h uh, sacral torsion on YouTube so I'll stop filming now we'll go to work and we'll come film the results I hope I think the camera got bumped and I hope the camera angle caught everything but I'm gonna just go ahead and repeat what I what I said in case we didn't capture that this PSIS on the left is prominent when I try and spring it obliquely to the right towards your right elbow there's no movement and when I try and spring it inferiorly towards me there's no movement there when I'm on the lower part of her, her, of her sacrum, it's lower on the left, as though, it, as though it were side bent left, and there's no spring mobility going up towards her left ear. On the right side, I can take up the slack, and I can get some spring mobility. The lower right quadrant of the sacrum, <coughs> excuse me, is prominent towards the ceiling. 
and it lacks anterior spring, whereas there is free and easy spring mobility on the left lower quadrant. So those are the mo movements that we want to restore. I'll stop filming now and we'll come back and film the response.